Open for Business is presented by Globe My Business. Create your success. business and we are here with DOF Assistant Secretary Antonio Lambino the second uh, asset Tony thank you very much for coming Paul. thank you for having me it's a pleasure to be here Caesar Salamat. Uh, asset Tony there's a lot of uh, developments already and uh, I'm sure uh, you have also uh, notified the audiences and the general public about the many developments happening uh, with train law so far sir how do you assess the implementation of uh, train law so far. Yeah, and thank you for asking, Caesar. There's a lot of uh, uh, controversy and uh, misinformation, but there's also, uh, based on the evidence, quite uh, good news about the train mm -hmm. law. No? So let's deal with that first, and okay. then we can go into the, <laughs> the issues that I know many people care about, and rightfully so. Yeah. Uh, but in terms of the performance of the law, and this was signed uh, by President Duterte in December of 2017. Mm -hmm. uh, it was uh, implemented starting January 2018. Mm -hmm. In terms of its uh, main objectives of making uh, the tax system fairer, Mm -hmm. uh, simpler and uh, more efficient, mm -hmm. we have made enormous strides in those directions. Mm -hmm. First, there was a problem with our personal income tax system for mm -hmm. two decades. For mm -hmm. 20 years, we had not adjusted our income tax brackets. Mm -hmm. And so what happened was, as people's uh, uh, income uh, increased over time, mm -hmm. kasi, because uh, inflation and other, issue, uh, and other factors led to higher take home, uh, nominal take home pay, mm -hmm. people were being moved into higher and higher tax brackets. Mm -hmm. Even though, uh, relative to the richest uh, households, they were not really making more mm -hmm. uh, than, than those groups. And yet, they were moving into the same uh, tax bracket mm -hmm. as the highest uh, personal income taxpayers. Mm -hmm. So what TRAIN did, first and foremost, was it, it adjusted the personal income tax brackets mm -hmm. so that it would be fairer to especially uh, those who do not earn as much as mm -hmm. the top 1%. Mm -hmm. And so because of that, 99% of income taxpayers now pay uh, or now take home uh, more, mm -hmm. uh, equivalent to uh, roughly a 14th month pay spread out over the year. Mm -hmm. And that is uh, true for everyone earning less than uh, 8 uh, million. Mm -hmm. no? And also we increased the threshold for exemption from what used to be just the minimum wage, mm -hmm. now up to 250,000 mm -hmm. pesos. Correct. And so people have more money in the pocket mm -hmm. um, because of that. Mm -hmm. However, the, the experience was mixed. And mm -hmm. we understand because inflation was pretty high last mm -hmm. year. And so what was done? The most important thing that was done uh, was uh, a focus on agricultural supply. Mm -hmm. Because when we looked at the data, the main drivers of uh, inflation were the, the key agricultural products of uh, rice, mm -hmm. fish, meat, and vegetables. Mm -hmm. And so the, the, the policy response and the urgent and the immediate response, starting because uh, the, the, the inflation rate started uh, going up uh, May, June, yes, July, second, yes. and hit, it hit its peak August, September, October, and then it started coming down. Mm -hmm. Why did it start coming down? 
it was because the urgent response was to make uh, food supply more plentiful, mm -hmm. to make the agricultural products that I mentioned earlier uh, easier to import mm -hmm. so that we could address the tight supply situation that we had. Mm -mm. Over the long term, we need to do many other things. Mm -hmm. We need to improve agricultural productivity. We've taken a very important step in tarifying rice. Mm -hmm. But those are things that we need to address, not just in the short term, the short term response being the increase in imports, but the long term response in making sure that the livelihood of our farmers mm -hmm. is better and that they are able to be more productive. Mm -hmm. But in terms, sir, of the vision of the government, in creating this tax reform is basically, of course, number one, to allevi allevi alleviate poverty. But, sir, can you, is there an assessment already on, uh, fr from uh, your side, where you really have uh, measured or assessed mm. the impact of the tax reform per different uh, yes. sectors of the government? Sure. Because so, originally, sir, we're, we're also uh, yes. hearing some some comments that it's only the uh, the ones in the upper bracket who are benefiting, but uh, not necessarily the ones who should really, you know, the, the larger mm -hmm. mass base, who should really take the impact. Yes, which is what I was trying to explain, Cesar. 99% mm -hmm. yes. of income taxpayers are now taking home more money, mm -hmm. except that uh, experience was uh, countervailed mm -hmm. by the, hi the high inflation rate, right. primarily due to agricultural uh, yes. uh, uh, products and the tight supply. Mm -hmm. Now, so because of those things that happened late last year, um, he, uh, the, the higher take home pay was not really felt yet. Mm -hmm. However, mm -hmm. the law, until a new law is passed in this mm -hmm. regard, the law has made it a permanent feature of our tax system. So now, as inflation has come down, mm -hmm. it was around 5.2% yes. last year. Correct. For the first quarter of 2019, I'm happy to report, yeah. it's 3.8%. Yes. Yes. Uh, no? And so, uh, the Banco Central ng Pilipinas has said that uh, it's very likely that we will be within our target range this mm -hmm. year. So first, I wanted to address that. Mm -hmm. But in terms of the performance of the law, uh, in revenue mm -hmm. uh, generation. It has been also very successful. In mm -hmm. fact, uh, for 2018, uh, the train's um, performance in, uh, in uh, revenues is at 108.1% relative mm -hmm. to the target. So it wow. overperformed. Okay. In terms of uh, the revenues it generated, that we are That's spending. That's for the 2018. 20, for the full year, yes. For the full year. Yeah, 108.1% okay. relative to mm -hmm. target. No? So uh, around 68 billion versus 63 billion. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, that, that uh, amount is uh, uh, invested now, uh, and starting last year, no? uh, in uh, social protection programs mm -hmm. and social investments, 30% earmarked in the law and 70% earmarked for uh, infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And another uh, piece of good news that I would like to share is that in terms of infrastructure investment, mm -hmm. which has the most number of multiplier effects mm -hmm. for the economy, yeah. right? And we're not just talking about big infrastructure projects. We're also talking about uh, the small road the farm-to-market mm -hmm. road, the health facility in mm -hmm. the province or, or in the municipality, um, the school buildings that are being built because of the congestion in our public school system. Mm -hmm. So all of those projects amount to around uh, more than uh, 10,000 infrastructure projects that are, are ongoing at any given time. Mm -hmm. And it is only starting in 2018 that we were able to hit and exceed our target for infrastructure investment. Mm -hmm. We are uh, we were at 5.1 percent mm -hmm. of our gross domestic product. This is mm -hmm. unprecedented. It has not happened uh, in history that we have hit that five percent target. Mm -hmm. It has always been two to three percent, no, roughly. Mm -hmm. So now and this that, is for infrastructure. Yes, okay. and so in 2018 we finally we finally mm -hmm. achieved our goal for infra um, infra uh, investment. Mm -hmm. At the same time. Earlier this year, the president signed into law the universal health care law. Yeah. And that is also the first time that we will have universal health care in the Philippines. That includes inpatient and outpatient coverage mm -hmm. for, mm -hmm. every, for every Filipino. Mm -hmm. um, so we must uh, make sure that our, in, uh, our infrastructure or hard investments are matched 
by human investments. Right. No? Uh, better education, better health care. The K-12 uh, program is becoming more and more mature mm -hmm. no? as uh, the Department of Education implements it uh, year after year. Mm -hmm. um, the free higher, uh, the free tuition in uh, state universities and colleges is also now a reality. Mm -hmm. no? So we make investments in the Filipino people and we make investments in the logistics network that unleash uh, the potential of our workforce, mm -hmm. of um, the Filipino worker, mm -hmm. in order that uh, our livelihoods improve throughout the country mm -hmm. and that businesses improve as well. Uh, sir, before I uh, ask uh, additional follow-up questions on infrastructure and healthcare, I'd j just like to go back to inflation. So you're saying, sir, that uh, even without, uh, if there were no challenges uh, as far as in inflation last year, uh, that could have been the time that, you know, the 99.9 the, uh, .9 Filipinos could have felt the impact of the train law to their uh, take-home pay. So 99% of personal income taxpayers. Yes, personal Yes, of course there are those who uh, had not been paying uh, personal income tax because yes. they were minimum wage earners. And so what they benefit from is the better infrastructure, mm -hmm. better health care, better mm -hmm. education programs. Mm -hmm. But for those who were paying personal income taxes, mm -hmm. um, uh, then now the threshold for exemption mm -hmm. is much higher at 250000 mm -hmm. a year. And the tax brackets mm -hmm. are more fair, mm -hmm. are fairer because uh, only the top uh, 1%, mm -hmm. uh, the, those earning uh, $8 million and above, are paying a 35% uh, tax rate now. Mm -hmm. um, everybody else. Uh, has higher take-home pay, mm. and and sir, uh, as as you said, with uh, with 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 that impact, are we saying, sir, that and you mentioned about the the link between uh, inflation and the agricultural supply, uh, because of that of the learnings of the government uh, and maybe the private sector also in that case, are, are do you think that um, the challenges that will address inflation will not happen? Uh, this year as far as agricultural uh, supply is concerned? Well, we need to watch this very carefully. In terms mm -hmm. of rice, which mm -hmm. was the biggest contributor in terms yeah. of agricultural commodities, we have solved uh, that issue in terms of supply mm -hmm. because uh, we passed the Rice Tarification Law or the mm -hmm. Rice Liberalization Act. Uh, the president signed it um, uh, earlier this year mm -hmm. and it is now in effect. And so mm -hmm. now um, uh, imports are, uh, are going to be a little more plentiful, but at the same time, from the tariff, because mm -hmm. in the past we were uh, under a quantitative restriction mm -hmm. uh, regime, which is a quota system. Okay. Now that we have a tariff system, mm -hmm. the tariffs are... 100% earmarked for the improvement of the livelihoods of our rice farmers. Mm -hmm. So that's at least 10 billion pesos a year mm -hmm. in the Rice uh, Competitiveness Enhancement Fund, mm -hmm. which will be spent on um, mechanization mm -hmm. so that the productivity is much higher, mm -hmm. um, better seeds, uh, Training and access to credit. Mm -hmm. So all of and those education, things, because I yes, think training is included yeah, correct, uh, correct. for our uh, for our rice farmers, correct. whether they want to continue planting mm -hmm. rice because uh, because it is uh, economically efficient to do so in their area, mm -hmm. or if they want to do it because in uh, let's say some upland uh, rain fed areas they have uh, special varieties like. Mm -hmm. uh, heirloom rice varieties in the Cordilleras up mm. north, the Arakan Valley in Mindanao. Mm. And these, even though the yield is not as high as what you would uh, expect from um, uh, irrigated, uh, uh, broad uh, and vast uh, rice lands, even though the production is a little more limited, international markets uh, have a very high demand for these heirloom rice varieties. Mm -hmm. So it's also worth exploring no? how mm -hmm. to uh, uh, help our farmers capture more value mm -hmm. from their their uh, hard work as opposed to other players in the market mm -hmm. uh, benefiting from from all of that back-breaking work of mm -hmm. planting and harvesting rice. Mm -hmm. So uh, rice is uh, the key uh, commodity. The others that uh, in, uh, contributed to inflation, we need to do better also. So, for instance, vegetables, um, 
were also high in terms of uh, price increases mm -hmm. no, toward the end of last year, uh, or the third quarter of last year. It started coming down mm -hmm. after the typhoon season. Mm -hmm. That just goes to show there was a, there's really a problem with our logistics capacity. Mm -hmm. We need to keep improving our infrastructure so that those vegetables can come to the markets from uh, you know, up north to Metro Manila or uh, Calabarzon or other mm -hmm. areas uh, where there is demand. Mm -hmm. Kaso, uh, when we don't uh, have the infrastructure network that allows for these products to get to the market in a timely way, mm -hmm. uh, the, the crop uh, is wasted. Mm -hmm. Nabubulok, mm -hmm. basically. So, on, uh, on uh, vegetables, uh, we need to keep improving our logistics. Mm -hmm. For fishing, and our fisheries sector, uh, we need a more sustainable uh, fishing um, and, uh, and uh, aquaculture um, industry. Why? Because our, our fish supply has been uh, on a downward trend mm -hmm. for many years now. Mm -hmm. It's not just last year mm -hmm. when uh, fish supply has been tight. Mm -hmm. So we need to keep improving uh, our, uh, our um, fishing uh, industry uh, in a way that is more sustainable so that mm -hmm. we don't over keep overfishing our seas. Mm -hmm. It's ironic because mm -hmm. we're we're an archipelago. <laughs> you know? yes. So we really need a more sustainable uh, fishing policy and, mm -hmm. and a set of practices in mm -hmm. the Philippines. Yeah. Okay. The good thing, sir, that we also uh, notice, of course, is the very, very strong uh, infrastructure development that's going on because of the current uh, build, build, build campaign of the government. Now, sir, uh, can you also tell us the link uh, of uh, infrastructure with uh, train law? Like say, of course you mentioned about infrastructure development and healthcare program. So in terms of that law uh, or, or, or the collections of the government, how much or how big is the uh, allocation or uh, you know budget for those two uh, things that you mentioned? Well, 70% is wow. earmarked for infrastructure, okay. 30% for social protection programs okay. so uh, for infrastructure um, we, of, we of course uh, have a better fiscal space because of the train law mm -hmm. but we also have in the national budget mm -hmm. uh, very uh, sizable um, uh, appropriations mm -hmm. for not just the 75 uh, flagship projects such as the Metro Manila subway, the mm -hmm. Mindanao railway, uh, so many major bridges in the Visayas, mm -hmm. um, and uh, highways all over the country. All of that is part of our infrastructure development plan. Mm -hmm. But we also have, as I mentioned earlier, tens of thousands of smaller infrastructure projects that are felt in the provinces, mm -hmm. in the far-flung areas, mm -hmm. that did not have um, previously uh, access to uh, efficient logistics. Mm -hmm. Why is this important? A, the quality of life of the Filipino family is mm -hmm. much improved. If people can get to work or uh, to other places they need to be efficiently, mm -hmm. and it doesn't take them hours and hours every day to get to work and to get home. Mm -hmm. It's the quality of life of the Filipino family mm -hmm. that we also want to support. We mm -hmm. want parents to spend time with their children, Yes. Um, family members to be with their loved ones, people to have time to self-actualize outside of work. Mm -hmm. now, of course, work helps us self-actualize, but you know there are other things we can do uh, with our time if we're not spending it in traffic all the time. Mm -hmm. you know, we can pursue the arts, mm -hmm. we can read great novels or uh, mm -hmm. books, no? um, and so that's one. The second thing we want to do is improve the logistics capacity for our small and medium enterprises, mm -hmm. even our micro enterprises. Mm -hmm. We would like um, products to get to markets more efficiently. Mm -hmm. In fact, some uh, estimates I've seen say that the, the price of a, a good in uh, the market is 40% transportation cost. We really mm -hmm. want to lower that. You know, so mm -hmm. that What's your target? Pa? Uh, well, what we want to do is to improve the logistics network all over the country, not just in terms of the major ports and seaports and highways mm -hmm. and bridges, but also the provincial roads, mm -hmm. the provincial bridges, um, the the farm to market uh, mm -hmm. network, mm -hmm. um, the uh, the the pathways that people traverse on a day-to-day -day basis mm -hmm. to get from home mm -hmm. to school 
to work and to other places. Actually, as a, uh, even when uh, with our previous coverages, uh, agriculture is not is just uh, uh, one of the many sectors where infrastructure is needed. Like for example, when we cover sustainable tourism, you know, they they also would want to put a lot of you know the big problem there is infrastructure. So okay, uh, yeah, it takes for some of our best tourism spots, and these are the ones that a lot of people go mm -hmm. to. You need four or five modes of transportation yeah. from uh, yeah. from for an international yes. tourist to get there no and even our local tourists have to uh, suffer through all of these multimodal and inefficient networks mm -hmm. no so we really need to improve that uh, but again uh, most important i think is the quality of life of mm -hmm. the filipino family mm -hmm. we want to make sure that families are able to spend more time uh, together mm -hmm. also so now, sir, before we go into a break, so you said that there are 75 priority projects under the flagship, the flagship under build, projects, build, build. and then there's 10,000 smaller, uh, more than, yes. more than 10,000 smaller uh, infrastructure projects. So will this sir, respond to uh, the infrastructure issues and at, uh, what certain, uh, some sort of uh, target do you have you know, to complete these uh, priority projects? Well, at this point, we have met our uh, goal of uh, five po uh, higher than 5% of GDP mm -hmm. spent on infrastructure in 2018. By 2022, we want to get to 7% mm -hmm. of GDP uh, invested in infrastructure. And that will uh, catapult uh, uh, the, uh, the productivity mm -hmm. and uh, the efficiency of various aspects of life. Including, mm -hmm. of course, business no, and entrepreneurship because we want to support our micro, small, and medium enterprises in uh, having a, a, a more even playing field. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm happy to talk about package two of mm -hmm. the tax reform program mm -hmm. because that is the main goal there, not to lower the corporate income tax rate mm -hmm. for corporations. Mm -hmm. especially micro, small, and medium enterprises. Now, we will talk okay. about train two when open for business return. Stay with us. for business is back and still with me is Asek Tony of the Department of Finance. Uh, sir, before we uh, we ask you about uh, train to, I would just like to raise this uh, uh, figure that uh, even if poverty went down 6.6 percent .6 in the uh, first half of 2018 half. versus the first half of 2015. Yes, yes. but train uh, quote-unquote likely exacerbated Philippine poverty by 0.26%. What's your comment on that, sir? Yeah, I think the, uh, you might be referring to a few uh, studies that were made. Of course, mm -hmm. there are other studies that show the opposite. And okay. what's the difference between these two mm -hmm. sets of studies? Mm -hmm. uh, when we looked at uh, the ones that said that uh, poverty 
uh, was exacerbated for some. Because mm-hmm. we need to take a look at that very closely because mm-hmm. the whole goal is to reduce poverty. Exactly. Right? So yes. yes, we take those uh, those findings very seriously. And mm-hmm. what we noticed is uh, it actually did not include um, one of the studies that claimed this did not include the unconditional cash transfers that are mm-hmm. part of the train law. Uh, the mm-hmm. 30% that I mentioned earmarked for social protection. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's 2,400 pesos for around 10 million recipients. We got to 9.2 million uh, recipients by uh, early this year. Mm-hmm. You know? um, so if you don't include the unconditional cash transfers, mm-hmm. then you don't have a complete picture of mm-hmm. how the law uh, affected uh, the lowest deciles. Mm-hmm. The second thing that one of the studies did not include are the uh, uh, the benefits from infrastructure um, infrastructure investments. Mm-hmm. Because not only do we improve our uh, experience as commuters and as uh, entrepreneurs or as small business people, mm-hmm. we are also creating a lot of jobs. Mm-hmm. And if we look at the numbers, it's at least uh, 15 uh, billion pesos per month in additional wages mm-hmm. from infrastructure. So if you don't include that in the estimate and you don't, or you don't include the unconditional cash transfers, then again, the studies will come up with an incomplete picture. Mm-hmm. So we urge all of us to take a look at these studies, whether mm-hmm. they say uh, poverty got better, meaning was reduced or uh, was increased. And let's look at whether these studies actually account for the main features of the law. Mm-hmm. Because again, uh, social protection programs such as the unconditional cash transfers um, and the Pantawid Pasada, those were included in the design of the law. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But in terms of your vision, how low, uh, in terms of measurement of the Philippine poverty, what's the target after it, uh, the, the, you know, the corporate tax reform program has been implemented? Well, there are actually five packages okay. in the comprehensive tax reform program. Mm-hmm. Train was the first. Yeah. Uh, the second is called the Trabajo Bill no? mm-hmm. um, uh, for the corporate uh, tax uh, reform. Mm-hmm. Um, but what our overall goal is in terms of the socioeconomic uh, development of the country, it's one million fewer uh, Filipinos in poverty every year. Mm-hmm. between 2016 and 2022. Mm-hmm. So uh, that's, the, that's the yardstick by mm-hmm. which we want to measure uh, whether we are succeeding or not succeeding in terms of uh, our economic development. Mm-hmm. One million uh, fewer Filipinos uh, who are poor every year, okay. lifted from poverty. Okay. Now, sir, we go to uh, train two. Oh, uh, what uh, you know the the main issue here po, that we are saying is of course there's are uh, there are sectors that who uh, you know who want to go straight to 20% reduction mm. uh, you know there's uh, also some chambers of commerce who agree uh, to exactly what uh, the Philippine government proposes um, and there are those who don't yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. it's a so, it's a contentious issue so well. where is it now yes. sir where are we now well for package 2 Mm -hmm. Uh, which is the corporate income tax uh, reduction package and fiscal incentives Mm -hmm. uh, modernization. So those are the two main pieces Mm -hmm. of that package. For train uh, package one, it was lowering personal income taxes while increasing uh, contributions of those who had uh, private vehicles, who liked to drink a lot of sweetened beverages, Mm -hmm. and who smoked. Mm -hmm. Now, those were the ones we asked to contribute more because uh, either they can afford it... uh, more than others, or they will access the public health system more than others Mm -hmm. later. Mm -hmm. Uh, For package two, what we want to do is lower corporate income taxes for Mm 99.6% of uh, companies in the Philippines. Most of them, micro, small, and medium enterprises. Mm -hmm. Um, And uh, from 30%, we would like to reduce the corporate income tax rate to 20% over Mm -hmm. a 10-year period. Two mm-hmm. percent uh, every two years. Mm-hmm. Um, why do we have to do it that way? Because we want to do it in a fiscally responsible manner. Mm-hmm. Not only uh, do we want to make the right investments, we also want to show all of those who will lend us uh, resources, whether it's money or help us in our development journey through other types of 
uh, collaboration and support. We need to show them that we are doing uh, things in a fiscally responsible way mm -hmm. so that they know that our growth and our development is sustainable. Mm -hmm. Because if you give everything away right away, while, you know, parts of our hearts would like to do that. Mm -hmm. you know, because we see suffering, we see pain all around us. Mm -hmm. We see poverty and we want to address it as fast as possible. If the path to doing that is not sustainable, then maybe you can do it for a day or two or a year or two. But after that, you're putting the country in a very bad fiscal position. Mm -hmm. We cannot sustain those mm -hmm. uh, types of uh, uh, dole outs and giveaways. Mm -hmm. no? So we have to really balance everything. Mm -hmm. And so lowering corporate income taxes by 10% from 30 to 20 has to be offset by um, modernizing our incentive system. Incentives mm -hmm. are essentially, uh, the fiscal incentives I'm talking about are the special tax rates that are given to some uh, investors so that uh, they come <coughs> into the country and ideally create jobs, invest in the countryside, bring new research and technology mm -hmm. to the country. That is, those are good reasons to give incentives, mm -hmm. except we've been giving them for the past 50 years and we have not made them performance-based. Mm -hmm. We do not require that. To keep an incentive, you have to create those jobs that you promised you would create. Mm -hmm. You have to invest outside of the more urban <coughs> areas into the countryside where economic activity is most needed. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you have to bring in that research and technology that can be used by other companies, other firms uh, over time, no? because they will learn from, mm -hmm. uh, from what, what uh, that company is doing in the country. So we want to <coughs> keep giving incentives for those reasons, but there has to be uh, a performance check. Mm -hmm. Are you really delivering? Mm -hmm. And if you are, then by all means, please enjoy the incentive. Mm -hmm. Second, it has to be time-bound. Mm -hmm. Some companies have been receiving incentives for more than 40 years. <laughs> wow. Uh, you know, it's a well, classic. What sector po yan? Uh, some in uh, electronics, ah, some okay. in others. Now, but but uh, the bottom line is this. Um, even our children, we give them, you know, allowance until they graduate from college. When they get their jobs and are earning on their own, at a certain point, siguro, we should not be giving them an allowance anymore. No? Mm -hmm. uh, because they're self-sustaining uh, self at that mm -hmm. point. So in the same way, we should support uh, companies and investors who need help in the beginning. Mm -hmm. But after 20, 30 years, the expectation mm -hmm. is if you cannot survive and do well without the incentive, then maybe there's something wrong with your business model. Mm -hmm. Right? But yeah. Asik, oh, sorry, sorry. Go ahead. No, okay. But Asik, the thing is, uh, this is a big issue to some sectors. Like uh, you said, it has to be performance based. So some and sectors time bound. and yes. time bound uh, and so, transparent. Yeah. So some some of the people say, like say for example, the P BPO sector, they they will contest that you know we're already doing good. We're actually contributing a lot of dollars to uh, the Philippine economy, and if this will be implemented it will be that sector who will definitely be affected. And uh, some of the contentions is that uh, trabajo will ironically uh, reduce a uh, number of jobs uh, mm -hmm. you know, in, the, in that sector. What's your comment? So we understand that? that concern and it is a very important one. First, it's, a tr it's called the trabajo bill. Therefore, mm -hmm. it should create jobs. Mm -hmm. It should not... Uh, it, on, on average, what we see uh, by 2021 20, uh, or 22 is an additional 1.4 million jobs. That's mm -hmm. based on the estimates that we've mm -hmm. made. Mm -hmm. um, whether, and, and whether uh, a job will stay or not in the BPO sector, we believe is, has much less to do with the tax incentive regime and a lot more to do with how we shift into higher value jobs mm -hmm. in that sector because of um, AI yeah. because okay. of uh, artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. The biggest threat to voice, the voice part of BPO is AI. It's mm -hmm. not the tax incentives. No. So oh, okay. what we need to do is work with industry to prepare our workforce, to mm -hmm. shift to knowledge processing, mm -hmm. knowledge process outsourcing as opposed mm -hmm. to BPO. Mm -hmm. no? um, higher value jobs, yeah. higher skilled jobs, mm -hmm. dealing with data, spreadsheets, information, etc. And being able to compete in that area. Mm -hmm. Because voice is really going to go down 
Uh, and yeah. some say very very soon some say soon some mm-hmm. say over the medium term mm-hmm. right regardless so of when you say talk. high value sir one of this of course is kpo the, yes. the knowledge process also are there other areas where you would really prefer to you know incentivize well we've uh, had several uh, consultations with the uh, with the uh, uh, the industry associations, no? mm-hmm. and we've talked about upskilling programs, oh, yeah. and they oh, yeah. are very well placed to feeling the stones in the water as you cross the river. Because mm-hmm. they're the mm-hmm. sa industry, so yes. as they feel the stones in the water, then we can figure out what kind of training programs mm-hmm. do we need to be in place so that we are ready for the jobs of the future. Mm-hmm. But we need to work together on that, and not just insist that we have to keep our tax incentives and the special Mm -hmm. treatment. Mm -hmm. What we want to do through the Trabajo Bill is incentivize new investments with a um, a superior a superior menu of incentives. Mm -hmm. Especially if you will create jobs, you will bring investment to the countryside and you will bring uh, new research and technology to the Philippines. All of these things are good reasons to give incentives. But again, it shouldn't be forever. Because Mm -hmm. in the area of incentives, it is only the Philippines na may forever. (laughs) We are the only country because we give a 5% GIE forever uh, deal to to, uh, corporations that does this forever. Other countries, 20 years maximum. And we can, uh, can of course, uh, uh, look at our competition Mm -hmm. and make sure that uh, our menu of incentives is indeed um, superior in some ways and competitive at the very least. Nasaan na siya ngayon, sir? Where, where uh, and uh, with that, what do you, uh, where do you, uh, what, what's the timeline now? Assuming, you know, a new Congress, uh, opening of the Congress, where, uh, in terms of implementing it, uh, with the, like, say, for example, we had the late passage of the, the budget and we have this uh, Trabajo Bill. So, how do you now uh, try to adapt or cope with your own targets mm-hmm. uh, with, uh, with the government? Well, the Trabajo Bill will probably be refiled in the mm-hmm. next Congress, no, the 18th mm-hmm. Congress. It, it, it looks like the runway for uh, uh, the 17th Congress is very short. Mm-hmm. But we are hoping for one of the packages to make it through. Which is the... Package 2 Plus, which okay. is the syntax uh, okay. package for universal healthcare financing. Okay. As I mentioned earlier, mm-hmm. the president signed into law one of the most important pieces of legislation that has been signed in a long time. Mm-hmm. the universal health care law. Mm-hmm. We want to make sure that the Filipino people uh, is, uh, is healthy. Mm-hmm. We want to make sure that the demographic dividend that we are moving into really allows us to take advantage of our young and well-educated workforce. Mm-hmm. Now, let me, let me share a, 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 a tidbit about our, our uh, demography. Mm-hmm. We have um, a workforce and a population, the average age of which is around 24 years old. Okay. In uh, the industrialized uh, part of Asia and the region, many of our neighbors are aging, mm-hmm. meaning must, uh, there are a lot more senior citizens mm-hmm. or older mm-hmm. citizens. And what that makes us is the natural partner of mm-hmm. these countries. Mm-hmm. And we're talking about Japan. We're yeah. talking about, uh, I think, uh, maybe Korea and mm-hmm. some many other countries in the region. So it's really our competitive advantage. It is our long-term competitive advantage. Mm-hmm. And we have to make sure our workforce is healthy and educated. Mm-hmm. As we move into that space, that is what will keep us on the road to uh, becoming a high-income country by 2040. This Mm -hmm. year, toward the end of this year or early next year, we graduate to upper middle income country status Mm -hmm. from lower middle income Mm -hmm. country status. We have to keep on our economic uh, trajectory so that we make it to high income country status within a generation. Mm -hmm. That is the kind of Philippines I would very much like my daughter to inherit Mm -hmm. from our generation. Mm -hmm. Uh, um, I'm sure any parent would feel the same way. Yeah, we we heard that too as a Tony, but... There are caveats then, uh, you know, on that. So, of like course. for example, if you are now, uh, uh, like say, if we, the Philippines would belong to that upper middle uh, income country, we will somehow lose the uh, 
uh, free trade agreements or the the, the, the concessional incentives, cons yes the concessional um, uh, lending correct that so that will impact given. on again agriculture well that will happen in a few or? years um, uh, after the the uh, we are able to move into the next category however. Mm -hmm. Let me share this also. Okay. I mean, if you look at the Japan Credit Rating Agency report, they have just uh, upgraded our credit rating again from stable to positive mm. uh, at the level that we're at. We're mm -hmm. investment grade uh, with Moody's. We're investment grade with uh, S&P. We're investment grade with Fitch. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? That means for the private sector mm -hmm. uh, and uh, for our bonds, mm -hmm. no? uh, we're being priced very well in the mm -hmm. global market. And for the private sector to access financing, it becomes cheaper also. Mm -hmm. if, as we keep being fiscally responsible, mm -hmm. we make sure we pass the right legislation in order to pay our bills. Like for instance, we have universal health care. Mm -hmm. Let's pass the syntax law, the bill that mm -hmm. will hopefully become law soon so that it is clear to everyone that we can pay for it. Mm -hmm. now, that's how we have to move forward. Now, we give the Filipino people the best that we can give. Mm -hmm. in terms of healthcare, education, logistics, and infrastructure. Mm -hmm. At the same time, we show ourselves, we prove to ourselves and all who are watching us mm -hmm. that we are doing the right things that will allow us to pay for all of these things sustainably mm -hmm. over the long term. That's mm -hmm. what will get us to high-income country status and um, uh, a Philippines that has a zero extreme poverty. Mm -hmm. Again, within a generation. You know, as I was going through school, mm -hmm. um, I thought, this, I had this romantic notion that we would have to dedicate a big part of our lives uh, to poverty reduction. Mm -hmm. I did not imagine that we could end extreme poverty within my lifetime. Mm -hmm. I'm only realizing that now <laughs> as, we, as we see that, you yeah. know what, the trajectory of the country yes. is pretty good in that yeah. regard. Again, that is our hope, that is our vision, that's where we want to go. It's realistic. Mm -hmm. What do we do now? Now we make sure that we keep investing in the people mm -hmm. and that we improve uh, uh, health and when we say health we're not just talking about the day-to-day -day health we're talking about reducing maternal mortality infant mm -hmm. mortality making sure uh, uh, the, in, in the first 1,000 days children are getting the right nutrition so we reduce stunting of uh, the mind and of, of the body mm -hmm. no? uh, all of those things will allow us to keep also on our development trajectory. Mm. Asik Tony, we'll, we'll spend the few minutes remaining to discuss initiatives of the government to the audience that is really close to our hearts, mm. small and medium enterprises, micro, small and medium enterprises. Sir, what are the initiatives of the government to support uh, MSMEs. them? MSMEs. Especially, sir, access to credit or any financial institution, uh, and because a lot of them would really want into go uh, to go into business. Like there, are, we have uh, student entrepreneurs who are also watching and listening. So, in terms of support, uh, financial access, mm -hmm. what are the initiatives of the government? And maybe you can also share access to the private sector in terms of uh, MSME development, sir. Yeah. Well, as we mentioned earlier, the tax reform uh, package 2, mm -hmm. the Trabajo Bill, is really uh, geared toward lowering the corporate income tax rate for uh, the large majority of our companies in the mm -hmm. Philippines, which are micro, small, and medium enterprises. Uh, in terms of financial technology, mm -hmm. that is a very exciting area uh, mm -hmm. where we can leverage um, the advances in uh, cell phone technology, in digital tools, etc., so mm -hmm. that there is better access to finance, mm -hmm. uh, that uh, people are able to start their businesses and grow their businesses without uh, being uh, vulnerable to loan sharks. Mm -hmm. uh, um, so um, if I may recommend looking at the Banco Central ng Pilipinas website, mm -hmm. they have a very strong focus on uh, fintech mm -hmm. and uh, financial inclusion. Um, giving people access to uh, uh, credit, to other uh, products and services through maybe their cell phones mm -hmm. or through local networks that they can access in their own areas. Mm -hmm. um, also, uh, the uh, Land Bank has a number of um, uh, financial technology and financial inclusion uh, initiatives that have uh, um, very much to do with leveraging uh, uh, digital and cell phone technology. Mm -hmm.
Sir, uh, being, you know, uh, a millennial yourself, uh, part I'm, I'm not, <laughs> I, but thank you for saying that. I'm actually uh, a few years shy of making it to that cutoff. Okay, <laughs> so there's a lot of, uh, you know, uh, talk about uh, digital natives. Yes. Uh, and of course, uh, I I am a digital migrant. So now, same, with the, same. I'm the yeah. same. So with the financial inclusion and with the use of uh, technology in business, in finance, what will uh, what do you think will happen uh, in terms of all these uh, reforms uh, with the financial depart with finance department with taxes and uh, i i heard also a lot of institutions uh, who would want to really digitalize uh, the government system for example sir um there is an issue that you know when they say a, a genuine tax reform would only be really possible would really be genuine if there is a administrative reform absolutely so like say for example the automation is an administrative reform pero sir hindi naman tayo nagbibigay ng budget so what's your take on that no, the digital transformation agenda is part of train and is part of the comprehensive tax reform program. Mm -hmm. So um, in terms of the citizen experience, for instance, in paying taxes, mm -hmm. the digital transformation agenda is something that is being, um, that is being designed already. Mm -hmm. In fact, the initial rollout of the, uh, the tools uh, that's already happening, but we can't do it right away. Because for everybody, we need to test it first with a few, uh, with a few initial users, so that we make sure there are no glitches. Mm -hmm. But the the but the rollout of digital technologies in the area of tax administration that's already happening. Uh, we are also going to streamline uh, submissions. Sometimes mm -hmm. you're being asked to put in data into a form that you've already submitted through another form, Correct. right? And so that has to be streamlined as well. Uh, if it's already been submitted through one form, it, we shouldn't ask for it anymore again. Because what's happening is you're putting a burden on the taxpayer, uh, on those who actually want to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. And making it hard, mm -hmm. so uh, and that wasn't done on purpose. Mm -hmm. It just happens because there are so many rules and regulations that get passed mm -hmm. over time. So we need to make sure we rationalize that, no? um, and that's happening as we speak. The mm -hmm. other area that's very exciting in the digital uh, space is e-invoicing, mm -hmm. uh, so that uh, we don't do it manually anymore. No? Uh, so mm -hmm. part of the train law is this e-invoicing. Um, uh, initiative that uh, the Korean government is helping us with because they're very good at it in mm -hmm. Korea. So we're already uh, doing the pilot study or designing the pilot study and this is for uh, rollout in 2020. Uh, so all of these tax administration improvements, leveraging technology, you're absolutely right. It doesn't make sense to do a tax reform without improving mm -hmm. administration. That being said, if I may, uh, if I may share, we are at a historic, uh, well, a, let's say a two-decade high in terms of our tax effort. Mm -hmm. We have not done as well mm -hmm. um, in, uh, in our collections, in our revenue generation uh, for decades. Mm -hmm. Well, we wow. hit around 14.7% uh, uh, of GDP for our uh, tax effort. And that is uh, the best we've done in two decades. So wow. at the same time, as the digital uh, transformation is being rolled out um, slowly but surely, uh, uh, we're also doing better in terms of collection. Mm -hmm. And so all of that together has put us in a place where, as I mentioned earlier, our credit ratings are looking good. We have to keep working on it so we get to the A rating mm -hmm. that we, that we uh, so uh, desire for our investors, our people, our businesses, etc. Uh, we have to make sure we keep investing in the Filipino people mm -hmm. and we have to make sure we have sustainable sources of financing for that. We have to make sure that paying taxes is easy or mm -hmm. as easy as possible mm -hmm. um, and uh, that digital uh, financial technologies are available to uh, especially micro, small and medium uh, enterprises and our entrepreneurs well said sir uh, last question sir before i ask you to you know send your message to our viewers mm -hmm. late yung budget mm -hmm. and they they uh we are hearing a lot of talk that it can affect uh, affect the uh gdp growth so with the with the uh, late passage 
what is the figure that you're looking at in terms of the economic growth and how do you think uh, you know, the government can cope to reach mm. its original target? Well, the estimate uh, in terms of the GDP impact, uh, the negative impact of the reenacted budget was made for the full year. Mm -hmm. should, a f should there have been a full year reenactment, mm -hmm. uh, but we only uh, had a reenacted budget till uh, a few weeks ago, yeah. um, a week or two ago. Yes. So what does that mean? That means that the estimate has to be adjusted. No? But it was anywhere from 1.1 to 2 point something percent lower mm -hmm. GDP mm -hmm. if we had uh, operated under a reenacted budget for the whole of 2019. Mm -hmm. So let's look at what the uh, new estimate is given that we only operated uh, under a reenacted budget till April, mm -hmm. effectively. No? Now, um, there is a catch-up. Uh, plan that is mm. being put in place. Okay. It is essentially 24-7 infrastructure investment no? um, in, uh, in areas where we can catch mm -hmm. up. It's not that easy nor that simple, by the way, because the best time to build, build, build is mm -hmm. January to March yes. because of the weather. No? It's, right. it's, uh, once the rains start coming, it's very difficult mm -hmm. uh, to, uh, to do construction relative to the first quarter of the year. So this catch-up plan will be as ambitious as possible, but we won't be able to make up for the January to March completely. Okay. Um, there will be a negative impact. Let's wait for the, uh, the more precise estimate. Um, but despite that, and you know, last year, despite global headwinds and everyone predicting that things would be mm -hmm. uh, not as good as uh, we expected, that was true to us to, uh, to a certain extent but guess what in the end we grew at a very respectable 6.2 percent mm -hmm. that yeah. if you if you compare that uh, with uh, our our uh, competitors globally we mm -hmm. did quite well mm -hmm. no? it's a very respectable growth rate mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we need to keep growing at that level so that we get to that 2040 vision mm -hmm. yung ambition natin ng NEDA Mm -hmm. uh, that I mentioned, and earlier. we're also reading, sir, that I think it's uh, Asia is contributing a lot to the growth in the global yes, economy. Yes, indeed, and uh, we are in the fastest growing region of the world, mm -hmm. and even with that, we are still one of the best performing mm -hmm. among those in the fastest growing region. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's a lot of entrepreneurs, startups, small businessmen who are watching now with all the reforms and the projects and the various uh, initiatives that the government is doing. Uh, what's your message? How will these affect their businesses? Well, we consulted the micro, small, and medium enterprise community last year. Uh, we have this annual consultative uh, workshop called Sulong Pilipinas. Mm -hmm. And last year, uh, we uh, worked with uh, the Department of Trade and Industry, the Small and Medium Enterprise Bureau, uh, to, uh, to visit different parts of the country where we could consult mm -hmm. uh, these uh, uh, entrepreneurs. And uh, we gave them updates as well as asked them for what, their priori what our priorities should be. Mm -hmm. And number one, the number one priority that our MSME uh, owners uh, told us uh, should be the focus is agricultural productivity. Mm -hmm. okay. So I think uh, this is a space to watch. Mm -hmm. Everybody uh, is going to be focusing on this and uh, caring deeply about it. Mm -hmm. Let's have sustainable uh, agricultural uh, growth and development mm -hmm. um, and it's not just going to be in the area of crops and commodities because mm -hmm. as you develop uh, your core agricultural uh, capacity you're also improving the capacity for food manufacturing mm -hmm. you're also improving uh, our ability to be more export competitive mm -hmm. we are also improving so many other aspects no, mm -hmm. of our food security uh, of uh, of other uh, things that impact the lives of the Filipino people and the Philippine industry. So um, please watch this space. If you are in agriculture, uh, please uh, be um, as uh, innovative mm -hmm. uh, and uh, please use research and technology and agricultural science and all of those good things that uh, places like the International Rice Research Institute uh, works on, um, uh, uh, Phil Rice, uh, all of these uh, uh, applications of science and technology in agriculture and food manufacturing they are so important for uh, the competitive the competitiveness of uh, of the philippines now moving forward 
Thank you very much, uh, Asak Tony. And uh, we hope that uh, uh, the Assistant Secretary can visit again when uh, uh, trabajo, trabajo is approved. And uh, we hope to get more insights and uh, developments from uh, the Secretary. Uh, our term of the week and our code of the day when Open for Business returns. And thank you very much, Asak Tony, for gracing Open for Business. Thank you, Caesar, And thank you to everybody who is tuned in. We'll be back. Open for business returns. term of the week you take a refresher of business terms to make you updated more informed and ready to make smarter business decisions our term of the week is LC or letter of credit a letter of credit is a letter from a bank guaranteeing that a buyer's payment to a seller will be received on time and for the correct amount in the event that the buyer is unable to make payment on the purchase the bank will be required to cover the full or remaining amount of the purchase due to the nature of international dealings including factors such as distance differing loss in each country and difficulty in knowing each party personally the use of letters of credit has become a very important aspect of international trade and our code of the week is from Benjamin Franklin he said beware of little expenses a small leak will sink a great ship. Join us again next Saturday, 5 p.m. Philippine time for another episode of Open for Business where we discuss business information, deliver the latest business news to keep you informed and open for business and be ahead of the curve from vision to action. You're on Facebook Live on Eagle News and you can watch us again in the video section of the Eagle News Facebook page and on eaglenewslive.com. Also visit postinglife.com for news and updates on Open for Business. Catch me later at 9 p.m. and every Wednesday also at 9 p.m. on Net25's Eagle News International as I report more business news here and around the world for Open for Business. This is Cesar Vallejos. Have a great day. Open for Business was presented by Eagle Broadcasting Corporation and Globe My Business. Create your success.